All right. Thank you, Vladimir. And thank you so much to everyone for coming along this evening to hear about personalization with Recombi. Uh, Recombi is a recommendation engine and it is able to produce uh, recommendations for users on your website. I'm calling this part two because at Drupal South last year, I presented um, uh, Recombi with in conjunction with Search API. And in that presentation, I was really sort of talking about how we can get content out of Drupal over into Recombi. But in this one, uh, we've sort of fleshed out the offering and we've got another couple of modules we would like to show you. The, the first one will be Recombi, which uh, you know has a block that will display um, the results. And we've also got another new module called JSON template, which is a templating uh, mechanism for uh, rendering content client side, uh, depending on um, you know various templates that can be defined. So content management is a solved problem. I actually opened my last presentation with this statement, but I, I think it's good to, to set the scene. We all know that Drupal is great at content modeling and allowing editors to manage relationships and uh, fields. As well, you know, Drupal obviously excels at um, the templating sides of things with uh, view modes and layouts, templates, render API, I'm sorry, the uh, render arrays and, and things like this. So we've got a lot of tools for the, for the backend uh, developers. Um, of course, it's got uh, JSON API and, and uh, integrations as well. But what we've said here is true, also true for lots of other CMSs out there. This is basically, you know, the accepted sort of groundwork that we'd expect from a, a CMS. So from my perspective, you know, the question we should be asking ourselves these days is what are we going to do with this foundation? And, you know, for me, that means, you know, going down the path of personalization and in this case, looking at uh, recommendations using Recombi. Uh, so how do we, you know, personalize, uh, you know, based on this foundation? Well, it is worth just addressing a few weaknesses of Drupal from, from my perspective. Um, firstly, the, I think the sort of authenticated user is privileged over the anonymous user. We have uh, roles and, you know, permissions, all the access controls very much tied in uh, to the user, we don't really think so much about anonymous users and the experience that they're having and how we can personalize for them. Also for the scalability, um, you know, caching in Drupal's, you know, around entities and the page. Uh, and of course, when you're using, you know, CDN or reverse proxy, it's that uh, anonymous page that's being cached. There's no real sort of concept of um, how can we serve up different experiences. And finally, we have the client side templating. As I touched on before, we've got really good back end templating tools. But how can we define templates that can be selected by editors, which are then controlling the way JSON and other things are, are transformed on the, the client side? So with these challenges in mind, I'm just going to quickly run through how we're, we're solving a few of these solutions before we, we jump into things. Um, so we're going to be using Recombi, which is a software as a service. It's uh, a scalable recommendation engine. So we're, we're solving that uh, issue of scalability. Will be the Recombi module, which I'll be showing, uh, provides some editor friendly blocks for easily placing blocks onto the page to show the recommendations. We have an integration going on in the back end with Search API Recombi. This is the thing that's pushing the content from Drupal over into um, the Recombi index which is you know, stored remotely. And finally, we've got the JSON template module, which is uh, providing some uh, templates, in this case, handlebars templates that can be selected to uh, display the content on the client side. So uh, let's just jump across and have a look at Recombi and uh, what, that, uh, what that looks like. So here we are on, on the homepage of Recombi, as I said, it's a software as a service. Uh, it bills itself as using artificial intelligence, and indeed, it uses a lot of different strategies for, for coming up uh, with recommendations. This is actually a service I've kind of been waiting 10 years for, and uh, you know, when I saw 
saw that something like this was available, it, it really um, piqued my interest. And um, so I've gone down the road of exploring it further. Um, Recombi provides recommendations for a number of different uh, domains. So we would have, say, the content domain, uh, which you know we're all familiar with. Drupal's a, a publishing system. It also handles e-commerce and um, products, and you know products that you've purchased and and these kinds of things. But basically, you know, it can handle any any vertical uh, you like because it's it's quite adaptable. Uh, it's you know got some nice analytics in the the back end, and it's got various APIs that you can use. We, we'll be using the PHP. Uh, API that they've got, as, as well as the uh, the JavaScript one. Just very quickly, out of interest, if, if you're interested in the pricing model, it's around 100 US a month to get started. I think that's kind of like a reasonable uh, sort of starting price to you know to get exposed uh, to to recommendations. So there's you know a nice sort of pathway there. So that is um, Recombi very quickly. Um, how does it work? Well, it uses, as I said, a number of uh, approaches, um, but the, one of the main ones would be collaborative filtering. And this is where users are being tracked uh, for, you know, a user looks at a certain item, and uh, this is called an interaction. So it's tracking interactions across a variety of users. With collaborative filtering, the recommendations that are coming back are based on the kinds of things people who look a little bit like you have, um, you know, have, have also looked at. So you might be familiar with Amazon. People who purchased this product also bought these products. That is sort of a, a collaborative filtering uh, based on user behavior kind of approach. But it also uses content-based uh, approach as well. And this is where we have uh, content, say nodes, they can be, uh, related to each other on a similarity score. So in that case, we're looking at the properties of the nodes. So uh, two nodes might have similar keywords in the title, uh, same sort of topics or authors. We know that they're going to be more similar. And this is where the Search API Recombi module comes into play because it's pushing that metadata across into the Recombi index to, to do that similarity. It, you know, there's a whole lot of other stuff going on, you know, as well as popularity, recency, um, you know, they've, they've got sort of different sort of flavors that they can put on these, um, the recommendations uh, that are coming back as well. Um, also, you know, items that you've already seen will not be uh, shown to you. So it really is like an adaptive interface where, uh, you know, it, it models itself according to, to what you're doing on the site. Very quickly, let's just have a, a look at some of their APIs. Uh, this is a, a public API where we're tracking a detailed view for a certain user. Uh, you know, you can track product views or partial views and, and other kinds of interactions. Uh, down the bottom there, we can see uh, a request to get the results back. So we're getting the recommend items for a particular user. Um, so we're getting five items back. Um, and when we do that request, we, we get a, pay, uh, a response similar to this. Uh, the response will have a recommendation ID, which is unique for every different recommendation that comes out, and we'll get a, uh, an array of recommendations. In this case, we're just seeing one here for, for one particular article. But you can see we're getting all that metadata uh, coming back. Um, server side, there is a private API that can be used as well. So the Search API Recombi module would use this private API to push that content over into the index. So here we can see where we're setting some values for a, a particular uh, node. Now we, we're using the private API here because obviously we don't want anonymous people pushing junk into our index. That's a protected thing. Uh, but we use the public API for, for stuff you know users are, are doing on the site. So the Recombi module um, that's been recently released, I think we're up to around alpha four now. Um, that is sort of taking care of a lot of this stuff. So the module handles uh, basic configuration, it handles the block, and it also uh, handles the tracking. So if you want to, to download Combi module, there it is to, to take a look at it. So sort of demo time, we're just going to go through and have a look at what this all looks like in real life. So let's have a look at the Recombi backend. 
Novus or a combi backend. Here I am, I'm logged in with my limited free plan. Um, we've got this database called Alpha Prod, and you can see we've got a you know a few of the statistics here. So you know we can see what recommendations you know have been made, how many views there are, which kind of scenarios are, are most popular, and you know there's a whole stack of statistics you can explore there. Uh, we have the item index, uh, so we can see which items have been pushed across from Search API Recombi. Um, so that's just a good way to validate that your data is going in. And we've also got users, and in this case, the users are um, identified just with a number. And in this case, this is a uh, Google Analytics client ID, um, but the default implementation in the module is just to use a random um, number and, and put that into a, a first party cookie. Um, so this is these user IDs here are, are used for tracking. If you had authenticated users, there's no reason why these couldn't uh, represent the, the users uh, in the Drupal site. A really important uh, concept is that of the scenario. The scenario is really what drives the recommendations. You can think of a scenario as uh, a collection of configuration items that fine tune um, the results. So let's have a look at uh, what I'm calling a personal scenario. You can define your own scenarios, by the way. So for this personal scenario, um, we're using a certain logic and that's the personal logic. So you can see that we have um, a number of different logics we could use here. Uh, but in this case, we're using personal and this is gonna provide recommendations back to the user as a whole. We don't care what item you're looking at currently, we're just concerned with the user. We do have some filters as well. Um, we've put some filters in here just to kind of get some sensible results back. For example, we only want to see content on the alpha site. We are indexing a, few, a couple of different sites into this one index. We only want to see titles that are not empty. We just want to make sure we've actually got some data for that particular item. And in this case, we just want to see articles. So you can see here, we are able to use these filters to, to fine tune uh, what's coming back. So basically logic plus filters, so sort of the main driver of um, how those recommendations are, are being done. If we just have a look at the items one, so this is when a user is on an item, what are they seeing? And of course, we've got the current item to set the context. And you can see that we have different logics here now because this is an item one. So we're just looking, we've just configured this to be default but you could skew it to say, let's show more similar things, or we could skew it to show more popular things. So you can see there's some tweaking in the back end there to, to fine tune uh, what's coming back. So yeah, defining your scenario is very important uh, first step because we're gonna be using these scenarios in order to, um, to get the results back. So there we go. So we've, we've quickly looked at the Recombi back end now let's look at a site called Alphabet. Alphabet is a demonstration site I've set up so that we can uh, have a look at this. So coming over to Alphabet, you guys may have seen this before at my last talk. It's just a very, very simple Drupal 8 site. Um, the site itself is it's a bit of a toy website. I've just put up you know, a few very basic uh, content, bits of content here based around WordPress and Drupal and hosting and SEO and return on investment, whatever, a few, a few little keywords, right? So we just, you know, some basic content to see how, how this might all uh, play out. So back on the homepage, this is where we can see the just for you um, content. And these are the recommendations that are coming back based on me as a user. So once again, this is the personal uh, scenario that we've just seen. So let's just click on this, where to host your WordPress site in 2019. Um, very short article. And we've got some recommendations here. Um, you know, we've clicked on WordPress. It's, you know, showing, showing some WordPress-y uh, kinds of things. If we just click on another developing for WordPress one, let's see what we, we get. Oh, look at that, we've got developing for Drupal. So you can see that um, you know, we've got some item similarity uh, working there um, based around the, the content, but also based on the, the behavior of, of what people have done in the past. Now, 
it is a bit of a black box. I, I can't really sort of say for sure why you are seeing things. It's basically quite a, um, you know, quite a lot of sort of nuance and, and different algorithms going um, on there. But you can see I'm, I'm back on the home page now, and it's, it's actually coming up with new content here. Uh, it's another WordPress article, but it's it swapped out the one that I clicked on because it knows I've already seen that, so it's serving up uh, new content. So that's that's basically the the user recommendations and the item recommendations uh, in a nutshell. You can see how how they've uh, they're working there. Let's just jump in and have a look at the block and how that's been configured. So this is a block uh, implemented by the Recombi module. Um, it is an items to user block, and we're using this personal scenario. Uh, we want to get three items back, and we also want to track the user when they click on a particular um, item. So that's actually going to put that recommendation ID that we saw into the query string so it can be tracked. And this is an interesting item here. This is the template. So at the moment, we're using the image card templates three across. We can swap that out and say use titles. And if we do that, uh, we will see now that we, we're just getting the titles. So this is the JSON template module kicking in. And we're actually using handlebars to render the JSON on the client side. And we're swapping the templates uh, in and out. Um, and so basically, the main sort of takeaway I, I want you guys to get here is that this is something an editor can easily pick here in the UI. Um, and really, that templating and transformation information is all happening uh, on the client side. So there we go. That's very, very quick. I know I'm rushing through this pretty, pretty quickly. Um, but I've, yeah, I've got 20 minutes to, uh, to knock it off. OK, so that was the public scenario block that we just saw in action. Let's have a look at the tracker block. So if we come into the different blocks, we do have a tracker in here. You may think it's a little bit weird to have a tracker as a block. The main reason that we've got this is we've got these different visibility plugins here that are really nice for controlling when something will work. So for example, uh, you know, we may want to control the roles that are being tracked. You know, I'm an administrator at the moment. Um, I probably should not be tracking myself, but if we wanted to exclude myself and just have um, anonymous people tracked, we could do it here. We could also track on different content types, of course. So basically, these visibility plugins are very handy for fine tuning where we're doing the tracking. And we want to do that because we want to maximize the quality of the data uh, we're getting back um, when we're tracking people. So, yep, that is the tracker block, and that's been implemented in. Um, in Recombi as well. Okay, so we're moving along. So behind the scenes, let's look at some of the other stuff that's going on here. We've mentioned the Search API Recombi module. This operates hand in hand with Recombi. Um, it pushes the data across into Recombi, and we do this for two reasons. One, for the item similarities, and two, so we actually have all that metadata there that's coming back in the, the JSON payload that we saw. It's not mandatory to have this, but it's certainly highly recommended because if you don't have it, your payloads, your res you know responses coming back are just going to have IDs in them, not going to have anything. Let's have a look at uh, what that looks like. So for those of you familiar with Search API, there's not going to be any surprises here. Um, we will set up a server, We've got a Recombi server, and in this case, the back end is Recombi. It's not solar, it's not database, it's Recombi. So we actually have a custom um, backend here that um, works in a Search API server. And then if you have a look at the content, it's just like how you would normally index stuff up. There's, there's no surprises here. You know, we've got the, the title going across and the summary and the content type and a few other things. So um, we do have a few special field types here, like Recombi set. So there are a few little, you know, extra goodies in here, especially around the image as well. Um, but basically, this is operating essentially the same as uh, Search API you'd expect. And you've actually seen a couple of presentations on Algolia uh, the last couple of months at the meetup. And yeah, it's a very sort of similar concept. 
So that's uh, that's how Search API Recombi is working. And then moving along to JSON template. Uh, so this is a new module we've built, just been released in the last couple of days. Uh, it's got a, a plugin system, or it is a plugin system for managing client-side templates. We have two different plugins. We got JSON template, which is essentially like the string, the string of the template that's uh, going to work on the JSON. And we've got something called a transformer. That's the engine which is doing the transformation. So the, the JSON template module ships with one transformer. That's called handlebars. So that's what we're using. We, we like that as a, a really simple templating engine client side. So we've implemented a, a, a handlebars transformer. Now each theme or themers are able to find the templates in a module or theme. So you saw there in Recombi that we actually had the default Recombi titles. That is a template that is shipped with the Recombi module. So it will work out of the box. You are going to get that nice little list of um, items with a UL and LI, just the titles. But if as an editor, if as a site builder or a themer, you want to go to the next level and show your cards, you can implement your own fancy one with cards with, you know, going three across. You can implement that as a plugin in your theme. And the main aim here is so that editors and site builders can choose their template when they're building the site out. So the solution here has been built around trying to get a good editor experience, but also making things nice for themers. What does this look like? Okay, just quickly, um, here, this is some stuff, some YAML that's in our theme, and you can see we've got a Recombi basic list and a Recombi image cards thirds. Um, that's the one we were looking at, the image cards thirds. We just give it a title, a description. We tell it where the, um, the handlebars template is, and we say, hey, please use the handlebars transformer, and please show this on the Recombi module so you can define where that template is going to, to display. And you guys don't really need to see this, but this is an example of a handlebars template. You can see that we're iterating through each recommendation and we're just pumping out some HTML and, and picking out the, uh, the values. So this is quite a, a simple uh, approach. Themers should be able to get their heads around um, these uh, handlebar templates pretty easily. And it's, it's relatively easy to, to implement it like that. And then, then it's just gonna pop up magically um, as a selection item when you're doing Recombi. All right, conclusion. Um, tried to design a system that was going to be simple, but really there's just an awful lot going on here. Um, you know, we've seen the scenarios, the tracking, the indexing, the querying, and the displaying and transforming. Um, but a really, really important step here is also the, the planning and design. So the discovery process up front, leading to good IA and, and UX, and then moving on to a good content model. And finally, the content to, to serve up to people as recommendations. All of this has sort of got to be working in unison. And you know, this really means you've got to think about your taxonomies, your similarity, and, and how things are going to relate together. And then, you know, like each, each of the modules I've just shown you today are able to solve these, um, these problems. So, it's quite a few pieces in the puzzle, but it, it does all fit together. I think the dealing with that complexity is certainly worth it. Uh, a system like Recombi is able to surface relevant content. Um, I really think it's going to add a new dimension to you know the way you design sites. So for example, you may have a site where the hierarchy is not working, the relationships are not working, and the search is not working. Recombi, through the recommendations, is able to provide another means by which users can discover content. Uh, and that's based on user behavior. So rather than the mastermind solution architect that's putting the site together. So I think, you know, by having recommendations like this, it's really providing yeah, another whole way of, uh, you know, discovering and engaging with content. And of course, we want to keep the user engaged, have lower bounce rates and, and longer time on the site and, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, make the site worth more. So that's, uh, that's it. In a nutshell, thanks a lot for uh, listening, and it's, it's time for questions if we've got a bit of time left. Thank you. I have a question, Mari. Um, in, reg in regards to Recombi, uh, how does it feed, for example, we had a presentation a couple of months ago in regards to Algolia. So Algolia is a multi-site search, and we uh, 
understand the recommendations, but if you would have a choice um, between Algol and Recombi or any other search API, why would you choose Recombi? Well, th this Recombi now actually supports search, and that, that is a new feature that they have. It's one I haven't explored myself, and it's one we haven't implemented. But we are only using Search API to push the content around, right? You know, so when a node changes, let's get it over into Recombi. If you want to rebuild the index, let's get it over into Recombi. If you want to define your fields however you want, let's use Search API, right? So Search API is amazing because it allows you to do all of that stuff. And, you know, the model that Search API has just fits perfectly for our use case of trying to get updated content over into Recombi. So it's not really for search per se, we're just using it to get the index over. And then once the index is in Recombi, you're getting recommendations out. So what I showed tonight was really not around search at all. It was around getting recommendations back based on the user or the item uh, that you're looking you're looking at. But you know, like if, if you come here and, and and go to Recombi. It's it's actually an, an interesting thing. I've I've still got a I've still got to look into it. But you know they're offering search here as well. So they're obviously uh, you know getting into that area. So that would be really interesting um, because they they're not just doing item similarity or, or keyword matching. They're going to be sort of yeah looking at user behavior uh, as a whole. Which is another whole powerful dimension, which is would be layered on top. So, um, I I can't really comment, Vladimir, because I haven't compared the two. I, th I think the use cases are, are different, but yeah, this search is available here now, so it would be something worth exploring. Thanks for that. I have a question from Mark from Aquia. Has Recombi been vetted for Cambridge Analytica? Sorry, has Recombi been vetted for Cambridge Analytica? <laughs> well, I I don't know how to, has it been vetted for Cambridge Analytica. One one of the look, I think you know people can be concerned about tracking, and I from my perspective, the real evils around tracking. Well, there's there's many, of course. That there's probably two. One one is identifying a, a, a person's identity, you know, their personal information with what you're tracking. And the other is would be using third-party cookies, which which then share that information to third parties. The solution I've shown here does neither. Uh, at no time is you know the Murray Woodman name or email address associated with what's being tracked, and at no time is that information being shared because um, you know we're using first-party uh, cookies. So from from that perspective, I'm totally totally you know happy from it from a non-evil uh perspective if you wanted to design yeah a, a nasty system you could you know um have third-party cookies or um, you know device fingerprinting generate client ids on that and potentially track across thousands of websites which is essentially what you know double click and google and facebook pixel and whatever that's what they all all do but i think those days are coming to an end with um, browsers clamping down on third-party cookies. So I think uh, first-party cookie solutions are going to be the way to go. And, uh, and you know, sites, the, the behavioral patterns of users on an individual site is something a site is going to want to track and, and make the use of without being evil. So I can put my hand on my heart and say, this really is offering a better user experience without selling the, the users short of, you know, sharing their, their data. Murray, are you, are you, it's Chris here. Are you saying that the um, that Recombi's communication is uh, entirely through your site, or are they speaking? You know, they're delivering the content directly to the the user's browser via the public API. Yeah. So what what um, what we've done is payload here. So the uh, the search API Recombi module pushes the content over into um, Recombi. So Recombi does have your whole, well, not your whole index, but it's got, you know, all the juicy bits of your index there. When we, we make a request to the, that public API, so this is, yeah, you know, some 
uh, get requests that we're, we're doing and we're getting the recommendations back for this particular scenario. Um, and then we are transforming that straight away in the on the client. So we never actually hit, need to hit Drupal again to get that data back out. So that's why it's a scalable solution. The index is in Combi. It comes back, we transform it with, with JavaScript on the client and we never have to talk to Drupal's JSON API or, or anything like that. So um, does that answer your question? Yeah, I think yeah. it does. And you can um, you could sit this alongside another search API integration. And oh, yeah. Push your, yeah? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, if we come back here to managing fields for search and, yeah, we're just back in search API here. I mean, there's not much going on on this site, but we do have the old-fashioned database search still just sitting there, right? So this is a MySQL uh, server, and this is a Recombi server. So they, they both can go there. So every time you update a node, you get two indexes getting updated, you know, this one and this one, right? So, yeah, you, you know, you've got uh, stuff going on. So for when this index gets updated, the Recombi backend does a private call to Recombi and pushes that payload over as, as JSON or whatever over into Recombi that way. Last one. How uh, John is asking, how does Recombi store data and comply with the laws like GDPR? Well, uh, that's a good one. I, I would be going to, um, <laughs> you'd have to ask them basically. I'm sure this, they've got a, you know, it's not really answering the question, but they've got data centers now in Australia um that you can set up and i think you know they're basically based in the us and the, the states i guess they are I forget the gdpr phrase but uh and you know whatever an information supplier or whatever so they would need to conform to that um, and i'm pretty sure they would the the bit the big question though is for you as the site um you would have to you, you would also have to consider um the gdpr and and how you're tracking that there's probably very high chance that your users will be coming from the uh, EU. So yeah, if that is a problem, you have to work out how you're handling uh, the GDPR. Just as a, as a little side note, there are, I think there are seven um, reasons you can uh, you, you can use for, for uh, complying with the, the GDPR. A consent form is one, but there is another head of power that you can use, which is providing your users with a better experience basically. So I think if your privacy policy mentions that, theoretically, you could get away with doing what we've done here, just using first party cookies and, and tracking it that way. Now, I'm, I don't mean to give legal advice, but yeah, it's, it's a really tricky area. And yeah, it's one you'd have to talk to your lawyer about ultimately. But um, yeah, so yeah, responsibility is on you and them. I'm pretty sure they would be covering that. But yeah, that, that would be a question you would ask them, I would say. All right, and thank you very much. Thanks, everyone, for the questions as well.